Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you how you can save battery on iOS 9. This is my iPhone 6S Plus, you can see there's the S there. It's a 64 gigabyte model for those of you that were interested. And what we have is pretty good battery life with the Plus models. Now if you're running a regular S or 6S or 5S or 5 or whatever, you may be having some battery issues. And I thought I'd show you how you can save some of that battery. So the first thing we're going to do is go into settings, and most of these things are in settings. Then we'll scroll down to battery, and down here you can see battery. So we'll go into battery, and this is very helpful because it provides two different things. It provides what's using your battery. As you can see here, 36% using Waze for mapping, YouTube, things like that. And we can look at the last seven days. And then we can also hit this little this little clock here, and it will show us that we had 1.9 hours on screen, 26 minutes background. And these are the things using battery. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, it shows us our usage. And this hasn't been plugged in since it was last full, so it shows 3 hours, 13 minutes usage, 12 hours, 35 minutes standby. And I'm at 66% battery. Now if we go back up here, one thing we can do really quickly is just turn on low power mode. So if we turn on low power mode, this shuts off all the background processes, everything, and saves us as much battery as possible. It will greatly increase your battery life, but you'll lose things such as fetching mail, uh, all sorts of different things, notifications, everything. But I'm going to show you how to turn those things off manually so you can pick and choose what you actually want to do. So we'll go ahead and flip this off. And we'll turn off, this is 9, iOS 9.3, but we'll turn off the new feature called night shift mode or night shift and go back to settings here. The first thing I wanted to show you other than low power mode is auto brightness. Now, Apple says to keep auto brightness on. And if we slide up here, this is the brightness setting currently for this particular phone and you'll see it's a little bit over halfway and it's set on auto brightness. If we go to settings we can go to display and brightness and make sure auto brightness is turned on. Now we can turn it down if we want or we can turn it back up and either way it works just as well but we can want to try and keep it down towards the bottom as much as we can. Now if you're in dark all the time probably auto brightness would be best turned off and pushed all the way down but that's only going to be very specific to those that are in really dark rooms and this will be sufficient enough as far as the brightness goes. So definitely keep that on according to Apple and it will reduce battery. The next thing we want to take a look at is app refresh or background app refresh and we find that if we go into general and then background app refresh. So here we have general background app refresh and what that means is in in the background of your different applications such as airmail or different mail applications music apple store all of these different things use battery in the background by fetching information based on how you use it so it's really nice to have if you're using something regularly if i just scroll down you'll see all the different things so for example google maps if you have it minimized or you have basically something over the top of it you'll want that on because it's trying to grab information in the background however for something that's a camera app such as this one here you may want that off because you don't really want it refreshing in the background and using up your battery so i've selectively gone through turned on and off what i want and set it up that way. You're going to save the most battery if you just turn it off altogether. However, it's a really nice feature, but if, you're, if you know you're gonna be without a power source for quite some time, you may wanna just turn that off. The next thing we wanna check is called iTunes Downloads. And what I mean by that is automatic downloads. So if we go back to settings, and then we scroll down to settings and then iTunes, wherever that is, there we go. Here's iTunes and App Store and you'll see automatic downloads. Now these automatic downloads are for different things or different types of media. So we have music apps, books and audiobooks and updates, and then you can tell it to use cellular data or installed apps. I have it off for all. And what this means is maybe you have a, an iPad and you download an app. It will automatically download that same app to your iPhone or vice versa. So maybe you purchased a new music album, downloaded it, it will download it to the other device at the same time and it will be available for you to use over there. However, that uses power in the background and may not be something you want to spend power on when you're not using your phone or whatever. You may want to just go grab that manually like I do. So you want to make sure you turn those off if you want to save more battery.
The next thing we want to check has to do with wallpaper. So let's go back. We'll scroll up to the top here and go to wallpaper. And again, all of these are under settings. So if we go to wallpaper, under wallpaper, this is actually a picture I took, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. But this is a picture I took, and one of the things that uses battery is background motion or motion on your phone. So if we go to choose a new wallpaper, one of the things that will save you a little bit of battery is if you flip this to still and stop the motion. So right now you have perspective motion on and if you move this around the image actually moves as you move your phone. It looks really nice but if you can't afford to spare that battery you want to flip that to still and it will stop using it. And what that means is it's not using as many processing cycles in order to do that on the graphics card. So it's really nice and keeps it from using more power, although I do like perspective. But either way, you can save a little bit of battery doing that. One of the most significant ways you can save battery has to do with mail. And under mail, contacts, and calendars, under settings again, you'll see you have all of your different accounts. And here are my accounts. And what you'll see right now is I have it set up to fetch new data. Now we have a couple options here. So I have it set up to fetch new data every 15 minutes. And what that means is every 15 minutes, it's going to look for each one of these accounts and see if it has new mail. So it will ping the mail servers, whoever they might be, iCloud, Outlook, Gmail, whoever, will ping those mail servers and say, do you have new mail for me? If it does, it will pull it back to your phone. There's also what's called push mail, which uses additional power on top of that to basically keep a live connection between you and the server. So when the server receives new mail, so maybe your iCloud account receives new mail, it immediately comes to the phone. And I actually normally have that on, but I wanted to show you what it looks like and what the options are when you don't have it on. So right now I have it set to fetch for all of these and push for Outlook. So we can flip those on or off individually, or if we go down to fetch, we can tell it to do it manually. And manually is going to save you the most amount of power because that means it will not check mail whatsoever until you go into the mail app. I actually like to be notified of my mail regularly, so I'm gonna go back up here, flip it over to push, and any of the available mail accounts that have push or on push and everything else checks every 15 minutes. So this will save you a significant amount of power if you have that set up. Another way we can save battery is to actually use Wi-Fi when we can. So right now you can see I'm connected to Wi-Fi. The exception to this is if you're not connected to Wi-Fi. So maybe you go to a store, there's no Wi-Fi to connect to. It's going to constantly be searching for Wi-Fi and using more power at that specific time. So you want to actually turn it off if you're out and about and not wanting it to connect to Wi-Fi. That'll actually use more power. And the quick way to do that is just slide up the command center here and turn it off. So we can flip it off, just tap on that, it'll shut it off. If you don't use Bluetooth, same thing, turn it off. If you do use Bluetooth, you have an Apple Watch, you use it with your car or whatever you have, make sure it's on or off depending on how you use it. That will save you some power. If you just flip it back on, I leave it on most of the time unless, again, it's searching for Wi-Fi and constantly joining different networks. I find that on my commute, actually, it's joining different networks and it really drives me crazy, so I just turn it off. Another way we can save battery has to do with location services. And location services are basically using your GPS antenna to locate where your phone is so it can use it for different applications, such as Maps, the Apple Store, uh, Google Maps, whatever, whatever type of application is using your location is going to turn that antenna on to figure out where it's at. So what we can do is actually scroll down and go to privacy and under privacy is where location settings are actually located. So you'll see location services at the top and we can simply turn them off, but that means we can't use maps or any of that mapping stuff. So we want to make sure that it's on if we want to use that and then split up what you want to do as far as your usage goes. So I have it turned on and you can see it says share my location. That's mostly used for find my friends, find my iPhone if I lose it. So I want to leave that on for my personal use, but you can turn it off. And then we have all these different apps. So for example, it says Google Maps and right now it's turned on while using. So if I tap on this, I have either never or while using the app. Different applications have different settings. So iMovie, for example, I don't need it to use my, my location because I'm never going to use that in this particular app, so I leave it to never. Again, if I go down to Instagram, it's turned on to while using. And some apps, such as Paper, want my location. That's actually a, an alternative to Facebook. It's a Facebook-made app, uh, and I don't want it using my location, so I turn it off. So again, just go through each one of these, turn it on or off however you desire, and it will save you some power because it won't ever use your location when it doesn't need to. Now, ultimately, if you really want to save a ton of power, just turn your phone 
to actually airport mode or airplane mode. What that does is turn off all of your cellular, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi antennas, and, and your GPS, and will keep it from using much power at all. The disadvantage is you can't use text, you can't use your phone, you can't use anything that's going to communicate with other devices. So it's really nice when you're on really low power or you can flip it to low power mode and that, and it will use a tremendously little amount of power. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of uh, things you can do with airplane mode on other than play games or use local apps, which is fine for most when you're on a plane, watch a movie, any of those things will save you some battery. That's pretty much everything as far as saving power according to Apple and a few other things thrown in there. Some people do say that you want to cycle your battery. I've never found that that makes a difference, meaning drain it to a zero, bring it back up to 100, and it will learn the battery. Uh, that really is managed by iOS, and you really don't need to do that on this device. And I've had every iPhone since the original and never done that and never had a problem. And I usually have pretty good battery life. However, if anyone has any other tips or, or tricks they've found, let us know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.